Good morning, and I welcome you in body or in spirit to Olivet United Methodist Church. If you're joining us for the first time, we bid you a special welcome and hope that this will be a blessing to you this week and kind of set the tone for your week uh, because of being here with us today. Some announcements. Uh, our district winter training begins today at two o'clock via Zoom, and these trainings will continue each evening all week uh, at 6.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. So if you would like to participate, if you would like to, I have the link, number one, you can go ahead and link in, I think. Um, and, but I'll be doing at least one Zoom per day or per evening. So if you would like to come and join me at the Parsonage, please do so. Uh, be glad to have you there and we'll social distance and do all that stuff. There's still time to sign up for the winter sessions on racism and spirituality that starts on January the 18th with our VS Laura Otten. And let me know if you'd like to sign up for that. There is information on both of those things uh, back in the back or in front. Uh, there will be a district Zoom seminar beginning, they're all by Zoom right now, um, February 24th on the introduction to lay ministry. This is for the lay servant training. Uh, again, it's not for preaching. This is just introduction. If you're a leader in the church, if you're an officer of the church, then there's information here on helping you to lead other people. There will be four sessions on Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 8.30. There's a $10 cost for the book, but uh, uh, the churches will reimburse people who would like to take the course. So again, let me know if you're interested and would like to sign up. And if you need to sign up and actually do the Zoom at the Parsonage where there's a good internet connection, then let me know. I'll be happy to, to set it up for you and have you there. That being all, the announcements, unless there's something else right now, council chair, uh, then we will, we will worship God this morning. Our call to worship is number 70, uh, and it's called the Gloria Patre, uh, or glory to God, to the Father, to the Son, you know that one. We used to sing it every week after the responsive reading at my church, but... Uh, but the, the words are from the 3rd and 4th centuries, and the music that we're using today is by Charles Menke. <laughs> today as we worship and praise you illuminate our path to more easily walk with you from today forward amen I want to take a few moments to think on the events of this past week that is of the mob storming the Capitol building causing death and destruction as they tried to overthrow our democratic process they failed but it has left our nation reeling at the divisiveness of our country, at the anger and the hate that is all too apparent throughout our land today. As Christians, our role in this is clear. We are the voice of reason. We are mediators, encouraging people to listen to all sides of the issues that are coming out and that to then come up with compromises that will benefit all people, not just some. We're to continue to encourage the teachings of Jesus Christ through our actions, 
We are to love all people, even those whose opinions are not our own. We're to show that love by praying, not only for healing for the many divides in our country of race, religion, and lifestyle, but also to pray for those who encouraged this catastrophe and those who participated in it. This does not mean that we condone their actions. It does mean that we pray that God will touch their hearts and lead them in wiser ways. I want to take a moment of silent prayer here for us to do just that. Pray for our leaders, for the police, and yes, even for this mob. I will close prayer with a prayer from our book of worship. Let us pray. God of all ages. In your sight, nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now, when our land is troubled, be near to judge and save. May leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we have turned from your way, reverse our ways and help us to repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let them guide us. Through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this world and our Savior, and all the people said, Amen. Our scriptures today come from the very beginning of our Bibles in the Old Testament book of Genesis and from the first gospel written, that of Mark. I'm reading from the New American Standard 1995 edition today. There are two of those uh, Ameri New American Standards. And I hope those of you at home will read along with me. Looking first at Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning, one day. And then reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 4 and verses 7 through 11. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And he was preaching and saying, After me one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming out, out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word today. Epiphany was this past Wednesday, January 6th. And when we think of an epiphany, we think of the light bulb going off or a revelation or just that thought that you look at something and go, wow, yeah, that's right. Once in a while, an idea comes to you completely formed, not just a snippet of an idea, but the whole situation understood completely in an instant. 
In the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, almost at the end of the movie, Indiana asks his dad what he had found through his search for the Holy Grail. His dad said one word, and I wish I could say it like Sean Connery did, illumination. Illumination, clarity of thought, light. This is important for us to understand, especially right now. Henry Jones Sr. had worked all his life to find the grail, to possess its secrets, to understand the mysteries of God. But he came away empty-handed, except for learning the most important thing. He understood that God is a mystery, not a prize to possess, but someone to be worshipped. Not to be understood, but to stand in awe of. We need to have that clarity of thought of what is real religion and what is being called junk religion these days. We need to see this light. When God created the world, the first thing created was light. To illuminate what was there and what wasn't there. Even before he created anything else, God needed to move back the darkness out of the way to have room to work. This should be a lesson for us today. We have to penetrate each person's particular personal darkness. A marriage on the rocks, a lost job, the pandemic, the divisions in our country, whatever their darkness may be. We have to give them the light of God, pushing back that darkness before they can see to understand our message of love and compassion. We look at those first five verses and understand one thing about God, that we can't understand God. God is so much more than we can fit our heads around. God is the one and the only one who can push back the darkness and bring in the light to illuminate things and give us that clarity of thought. The one thing we can do is be in awe and worship the God who came and moved through the chaos to get to where they, Father, Son, and Spirit, needed to be. Illumination. Epiphany. God still moves through our chaos to where they, they, Father, Son, and Spirit, are needed, where the darkness reigns. When Jesus came to the Jordan, he had been waiting for around 30 years for the right time. He knew he had a message to bring. He knew he needed to get it out there. But the timing, the timing had to be just right or it wouldn't work. And his mission here on earth would fail. He heard about this man, John, the baptizer, who came out of the desert wilderness, preaching a hard message to the people, a message of forgiveness after repentance. Now, we often think of the repentance as turning around or changing our mind, but it also means that you see things. Illumination. Jesus knew then that the time was right. He had the clarity of thought that it was now. And it came through this message of a man named John. And so Jesus came to be baptized. And you've got to wonder why Jesus had to be baptized. He didn't need to repent. He had never sinned. But he needed the confirmation. He needed to know for sure that he wasn't reading the signs wrong. Was it really the time for his ministry to begin? And so he was baptized. And Mark is very explicit here where some of the other gospels are kind of vague about who saw and heard what. Here in Mark it's clear, Jesus 
needed the confirmation and he got a very personal one. It was Jesus and only Jesus who heard that voice and saw the dove descending. And why did the Spirit come as a dove? Well, doves are known for their gentleness and their comfort, that cooing sound. And they are often used as a sign of peace. John had been preaching hellfire and brimstone. William Barclay says John's message was a message of the axe laid at the root of the tree, of the terrible sifting of the consuming fire. It was a message of doom and not of good news. But the Spirit came to Jesus showing that Jesus would have a different message. He would have the good news. He would come to show compassion and love, the gentleness and peace of a dove. We're in a new year. We've been through a time of upheaval in our lives and this week, particularly in our nation. Many have questioned why God has allowed these things to hit us and hit us so hard, even in the faith communities. I mean, why weren't we exempt from COVID like Moses and the Israelites in, Je in Egypt? Why are Christians dying? Surely that would have brought people back to God if they saw that we weren't getting sick. But that would have been the message of John the Baptist. That would have been saying, believe in Jesus as we do or go to hell in a handbasket. And that's not the message that God wants conveyed to people. We have to have clarity of thought. We have to have illumination. We're to shine the light, my people. We're to help others see the God who created order out of chaos. We're to show them the compassion and love and gentleness of the Savior. This week has been one of chaos and darkness for our nation as a whole. We need to begin to heal. And we can only do that by showing that love and compassion and gentleness to all the people of this country, even the ones who stormed the Capitol. That is real religion. All this stuff about believe exactly as I believe or you will drown in the lake of fire is junk. It is people putting themselves in the image of God, making God look like them. In other words, they're making God into an idol. Real healthy religion stands in awe and wonder of this God of creation. I saw this week that deep space is not dark as we always assumed that it was. The New Horizons craft that went past Pluto is now way, way, way out there. And it continues to send back pictures. It takes them a while. But there is light out there, even past the edge of our solar system, far from our sun. God's light is not restricted to just here and now to just one people, to just one place even. It's even out there in the borders of space. Our society has gotten to a point where we are afraid, afraid of people who are different, afraid of the future, so afraid that we can't seem to tolerate anyone who has different ideas than we do. And this is part of junk religion and junk politics. I was reading something this week from Father Richard Rohr who said, I'm sorry to say that today we have a lot of ideological hysteria and junk religion on both the left and the right. Junk religion is similar to junk food because it only satisfies enough to gratify the momentary desire but does not really feed the intellect or the heart. Junk religion is usually characterized by fear of the present and fear of the future. 
Junk religion is all around us today. And it was most apparent in Washington this week. People afraid of what the future would hold, so afraid that they became a mob. Our society needs to change. We have left God out of our lives in this country for far too long. We must return to the light that pushes back the darkness of this junk religion. If we have a real healthy religion, we would see how we are connected with everyone in the world. All were created to be what they are by a God who had a bigger plan. By the God who created and did create all that is and all that ever will be. If we have a real healthy religion, we would have a real connection with God and hear his voice whispering with the gentleness of a dove, as well as thundering in the midst of chaos. If we have a real healthy religion, we would have illumination. Even in the chaos, we would be at peace because we would know that the God of love has our back. Current events like COVID and riots would not be an impediment to our ministry. It would be seen as an opportunity, an opportunity to listen for that gentle voice of God and be willing to step forward as Jesus stepped forward into a ministry that was so far removed from the junk religion of his day that he was seen as a threat. So my people, are we in the dark and listening to all the threats from the junk religion of our day? Do we see how we are connected with each other or do we think that anyone who is different than us must be in darkness and must be evil? Do we see this virus and the unrest in our country as a judgment of the wrath of God? Or are we secure, standing in awe of our God with a real and healthy religion that tells us that God has our best interest at heart even when we can't see it because of the darkness around us? I have a sweatshirt that says faith down the front and beside that it says be strong, be brave, be fearless. You are not alone. And so I say to you, have faith in the God who creates. Be in awe of his wisdom and his knowledge. Put your faith in him and the good news message of the God of love and compassion. Shine that love and that light of peace and healing into this troubled world. Let us pray. Oh God, you have brought us through a week of darkness in our country, and we thank you. Help us to recognize our true representatives and authentic leaders, men and women who love your people and can walk with them, who dream their dreams and strive to accompany them to their common goal. Lead us in ways to push back the darkness of junk religion and fear. Guide us to real, healthy religion that shines the light of your love and your compassion for all things so that we may help others to fear no more. We thank you, Lord, that Martha got a good report from her doctor and is able to be a little more independent at home. Please help her not to overdo. Cynthia's niece is better, and we are thankful for that. And we have sunshine. It's great to see the sun out. It lifts our spirits. We ask for healing for Julia and her family as they fight COVID together. We're thankful that Jennifer is, is better. And we ask you to be with Brittany and JD. We thank you that Eugene's son, Spider-Man, is recovering good from his heart attack. We ask you to be with Melissa as she continues with pain 
in her back and, and pray that these shots will help her. And we ask you to be with John Richard as he continues with chemo. Strengthen all of these so that they can be with us for years to come. We ask you to be with J.D. Tucker's family as they mourn. This virus has taken another serious turn, Lord. Over 4,000 deaths per day now here in the U.S. The whole world needs you to bring us out of the darkness of COVID, the fear of being with others. Show us ways we can be safe and still be in ministry to those around us, shining the light of your presence for them to see. Lord, walk with us in the following days as we try in our small way to help heal our country. Show us ways that even here in rural North Carolina, we can work toward healing racism and the fear of the future. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of us all. Amen and amen. Our final hymn is the first and last verses of number 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Words by Walter Chalmers Smith and music adapted from the Welch Melody by John Roberts. to talk about this week's happenings if you're feeling depressed or or feel the darkness gathering around you our information is here for you to use as you need to let us be your church in these trying times even if we do it remotely for those listening on sermon by phone you may contact me by phone at 704-640-6872 or by mail at P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. As our blessing this morning, I'm using an ancient Egyptian blessing. May God stand between you and harm in all the empty places you may be. And I'd like to add, may God's light shine in your darkness and give you the warmth of his love and his light. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>